a royal respite by Tornado of Fire Hooves. Chapter 11, A Final Escape. Oh, Luna, Cats wailed sadly, as the three of them were forced back into a huddle. I think we're in trouble now. The crowd closed in on the three fillies, angry eyes staring them out. An entire herd of adults from town to town, most of them Celeste and Lynette did not know personally, were ready and willing to drag the two sisters away and lock them up. Why are you doing all this? Celeste asked, looking around the angry mob. What have we ever done to you? You're obviously here as enemies of the Republic, one mayor called out from the crowd. You've come to save us other parties with your strange magic. We're not going to let you slave our kind again. A stallion from another side called. We Earth Parties will stay free. But why does that mutate stuff mutilates us innocent foes? Lynette pleaded, looking around for a means to escape. They have done nothing to deserve our punishment so severe. We must take things all equal for all ponies. By removing all extra advantages non Earth Parties would have over us. Does this sound familiar to anybody? I ain't just talking Starlight here. Fans of the show, y you are thinking of Mike, aren't you? One of the doctors called out from the back. They saw all our efforts. All ponies in the Republic are truly equal. This is the kind of foe Lynette feared facing. Not an evil spellcaster or a malevolent spirit Tartarus bent on Kakarkari and Questia. But the nameless, faceless masses, driven by their prejudices and biases to commit horrible atrocities to the other ponies in the name of what was right. It was this narrow minded bigotry that had allowed so many foals to be mutilated. The same bigotry that had taken a young Pegasus foal named Pat away from the equestrian parents that loved her. Lowering her head, Celeste tried to use her magic, but her power in this place had become so weakened that it could produce little more than a spark. Lynette struggled to produce him in a light, but nothing came from her invisible horn. Great! We don't have any juice left! My feeling growled. We're done for! It was at that moment, Pat looked around at the other two fillies. Sally broke into a run, going straight at the surrounding ponies. A for a gap to the rest of the teenage filly was able to run away. Let her go, one of the stallions snored. It's these Finney's princesses that we're after. At least Pats will not Sarah faint, Celeste sighed. I fear it was these ponies will do to us. Hold it together, sister, Lynette asserted her. We shall get us all of this penalty yet. Ugh. Starlight groaned. Seeing the other ponies finish up their last dance for tonight. Can you believe the nerve of those two sisters? I know, right? I can't believe the nerve. Those no good tramps. It was then that Miss Hackney came trotting into the gym, looking around at all ponies present. Baba, Miss Hackney, what are you doing here? Baba and asked her. As the five fillies from the group tried up to her. Something wrong? Girls. Have you seen Lynette and Celeste? She asked him. I really need to speak to them about something important. Those two left after we found them out. Melody snored, stabbing her hoof. They only wanted to be friends with us so they could trick the boys. Oh dear, this is not good. The elderly Trisha whinnied. Looking around to make sure all the other students were out of earshot. Girls, I have something to tell you. Celeste and Lynette aren't just normal exchange students at all. Those two are actually the Royal Princess Sisters of Equestria. What? Melody squeaked and shocked. I don't believe it. I knew it! Bright eyes yelled, nearing her eyes. I knew something was off about those two. All this time we were hovering spies. Starlight went in disgust. We were disgraced in Republic. Now, don't just them too hasty. Miss Hackney scolding them. A certain Celestia and Nuna had their reasons for. Miss Hackney, those two lied to us! Bright eyes interrupted. Just as bad as all the lights that say their magic uses are. No! That's not fair at all! Pat's kept going into the gymnasium, almost out of breath. Those two have been our friends, and now they need our help. Pat, are you alright? Bon Bon asked, trying over to her friend. What's wrong? The townspeople only said Celestia and Luna trapped! The filly replied, after catching her breath. We gotta help them! 
Why should we? Those alicorns tricked us into being their friends, Bright Eyes complained. They used us and hurt our feelings, Sweetheart added. Yes, me, they're getting exactly what they deserved, Bob Bob fizzed angrily. How can you say all that? They're our friends, Pat protested angrily. The whole thing with the boys was just an act. They're trying to get Melody, Starlight, and Bright Eyes together with the cults of their dreams. Really? They were trying to help us? Starlight asked, surprised. Big freaking deal. That doesn't change what they are, Melody snapped. They're alicorns, and they're just waiting for the chance to oppress us Earth ponies. You honestly think those two were trying to oppress us? Pat snorted indignantly, looking from friend to friend. Bright eyes, didn't you and Lynette make Pony Colton fill a better place by cleaning up Paradise Lake? Bright eyes nodded. That's true, but... a Bon Bon. Didn't you girls have fun doing each other's mains and laughing together? Yeah, but... Melody trailed off. Those girls have proven themselves to be true friends, even if you girls don't see it! Pat stamped her hoof, staring at each of her friends in the eye. And I want to know if you're going to help me save them, or will you not? I don't know. Sweetheart whining nervously. We could get in trouble for be helping out a couple of alicorn spies. Girls, I cannot tell you what to do in this case. Miss Hatney advised them. But whatever choice you make, remember all that I in life have taught you. It was also at that moment that Ace, Lancer, and Teddy came trying up, smiling at the girls nervously. Girls, we heard everything when we were cleaning in the other room, my told the girls. Whatever you five choose to do, we want to help. The five girls looked between themselves in several minutes, until Starlight finally tried forward. All right, Patch. Earth Pony told her friend, "What can we do to help?" Lynette and Celestia were still trapped in the Sarah the Angry Mob, who stood still as a wall, cutting off their escape. Well, "What are we waiting for?" An impatient mare asked the others. "Let's take care of them right now." "No, no, stay back!" Another mare warned. "Who knows what they might do? Oh, like the water is putting a spell on us." "Keep an eye on them." One of the nameless stallions in the mob called out. Don't let them make any sudden moves until the authorities get here. Whilst we wait for our to come to us. I was to ask us now. When it called out to the Dr. Ponies, recognizing the mob. Why does thou take away the wings of Pots, the equestrian the ambassador's daughter? Who is that Pats' mother actually is? I had one dead. Now these mother snoring. We get a lot of dignitaries and four diplomatic visitors to here, and our orders from higher up are to take, equalize the newborn foes whenever we can. But why? Celeste asked, curious. Those ponies are going home. Why take and mutilate their foals for a life in the Republic? To raise the ponies, who will eventually go back to their positions of power in their homelands, with loyalty to the Republic and its interests. The doctor sneered. Look at the success we have with Princess Ro Rosie, who had made the Isle of Apollonia a strong ally for the Republic. Why do you think our town is so successful? Another point pointing it out. Ponies and industries for transportation to retail are involved. You're all a part of this? When it said hard. The whole town is one giant brainwashing factory? Not the whole town, a stallion corrected her. There are many who are not aware. Now they're telling you won't matter. Another stallion goaded them. In a few hours, you'll be in the capital, lying on laboratory tables in several pieces. Suddenly, five fillies came galloping up to the mob of ponies at top speed, leaping over the circular crowds, landing between the adults and princesses. Leave our friends alone! Starlight called out, storing and stamping her hoof. You hurt one hair on their manes. We'll have to get rough. We're not gonna let you turn them into experiments, Bon Bon growled. So back off! Melody, what's that oath gotten into you? The Philly's mother asked, horrified. Why are you protecting these monsters? Why do you st Starlight and I have scars on our foreheads, mother? The two points went their manes back, to reveal the spots where their horns had been. Pat's told us everything. They're not the monsters, mother. You are! Now let them have it! Ace, Lancer, and Teddy came galloping up to the mob. The cults all plowed into several stallions, taking them by surprise and sending them flying. Pat, now! Sweetheart called into the night air. 
Hurry, run, the mob is in disarray! There are several flashes of light in the sky, a strong rust of wind. Suddenly, an alicorn and two Pegasus mares keep swooping down from the clouds, with pats flying on the lead alicorn's back. Yeehaw! The sunny filly called out. The two Pegasus swooped in and grabbed the two princesses with their hooves. Vino cow party! We're trying to rescue the alicorns! What the stallion screamed. Don't let him get away! Mob rushed forward, eager to trap Celeste and Lynette. The three flying ponies emitted a bright flash from their bodies, blinding the surrounding inclines. Spreading their wings, the three zoomed up to the sky and flew away from Coltonville. Yeah, they got away! Lester exclaimed, We did it! And now, you're gonna get it! One of the stallions snorted as the mob seized the cult of Phillies violently. We're gonna tear you to pieces! Late! Late, I say! The second called out. The king's trying up. Those children were under the control of the alicorns. And if you harm them, I'm afraid I'll have to report you to the authorities. Putting the teens down, their ponies do regularly disperse. After several minutes, the five Phillies and teacher were left alone in the square. Is everyone all right? Starlight asked, looking at her friends. Yeah, we'll live. Freya just exclaimed, shaking her mane. I think the girls all got away, too. Yeah, we did it! Teddy exclaimed, picking up sweetheart and hugging her. Pets and the others to get back to Equestria home free. I'm very proud of you, my little ponies. The Saturday told them proudly. You all let your friendships overcome your prejudices. Yeah, but I'm going to miss Pats. It's Celestia and Luna, too. Starlight exclaimed sadly. I hope they'll be all right. I'm sure they will be, Bright Eyes assured her. But now, it's up to us to make things better here in the Republic. We had to get laws passed and stuff, bob told her with a laugh. Well, once we grow up, of course. Come on, girls, it's late, Starlight told her friends. Let's head for home. All the girls turned to leave. Melody looked back at the other girls. Hey, you guys? See us, the others. <laughs> What's up, Melody? Ace ass took her huff in his. She gave the cult with a side of a troubled look. Maybe you get the feeling you've forgotten somebody. Miss Acne! Any pony out there? Could someone let me out? Voice called for the locked closet. Huff banged on the door inside. Go on. I need to use the bathroom. Epilogue. Wow. I can't believe how incredible this place is. Matt's exclaimed. Looking around Camp Lot Castle and all. It's like something out of a fairy tale. After the glow show ponies dropped them off at the pink isle of the pony ends of sea, Princess Rosie had the three refugees kept under diplomatic immunity until a steamer could carry them out beyond the Republic's territorial waters. From there, a sky carrier delivered them back to Equestria, where the princesses quietly picked up their duty, royal duties once more. Along the journey, Patsy reacted to every new thing in wonderment, like a wide-eyed foal who had never been away from home. The whole sea voyage as they sat on deck, while the Yelson waves roll away. During the carriage rides, he outstretched her hooves and stood on the carriage's rail, saying, Look at me! I'm king of the world! It was until they were nearly home, however, that the filly made her most humble request. Celestia, Luna, the filly asked nervously, Could I see you in regular forms, please? The two sisters looked at each other sadly. This was the moment they had been dreading. So they never see us the same again, you know, Celeste told her beforehand. That's why we've held off changing back throughout the entire trip. How does friendship be stronger than not, sister? When it shy at her. Let's show our dear friend ourselves in all of our glory. Sinking their manes, the two fillies' bodies slowly began to glow. Their bodies grew larger, shifting and changing, as a pair of wings and a horn on each of their heads appeared. There, before the surprised fillies' eyes, the pair of the magnificent and regal form of the two most powerful ponies in the face of the world. Yeah, your majesties! She stumbled over her words, a blank stare of awe covering her face. Elsie had known in her mind that these two were royal princesses. Never really hit on pads on a muscle level until the two real mares stood before her in all their alcorn glory. Being friends with Princess Rosie, with the to same old filly in the fancy clothes, but this... After a few minutes, the filly bowed her head in reverence. Oh, your majesty, please forgive my arrogance. I never meant to. Pots, all the beware, we. But Celestia raised her hoof, shaking her mane. 
Things would never be the same with, between the princesses and the filly again. And it says their friendship was gone forever. From this point onward, they would discover, Pats would treat them with no less awe and reverence than the rest of their subjects did. That was kind of sad. I think the message would have been stronger if they went the other way. What follows was a flurry of events. Royal announcement of the princess's return after a long dramatic trip. Pats' reunion with a teary-eyed pair of royal pegasuses at a court. And a flurry of activity among the equestrian media over a remarkable tale the two sisters had told them of their visit to the Republic. There has been an outcry from both the populace and our allies over the brutal ethnic cleansing practices of the Republic. One of the princess's advisors told him, Isle of Pony, Crystal Empire, and even our enemies in Dream Valley, who probably love destroying Equestria more than making friends with us, are calling for a trade embargo against the Pony Land Republic. And what of the Republic's response? Celestia asked, concerned. Are they angry we came in disguise amongst the rare populace? Are they playing some form of rebellion? Quite the opposite, Your Highness, the advisor replied. Under the threat of their economy collapsing and outrage from their own citizenry, who are unaware, an entire sweep of arrests have been made throughout both the government and medical industry. The Republic has even offered to help diplomats and other foreign visitors locate their children that were taken from them. They paid the astronomical bill for domestic operations and surgeries, to restore lost limbs for pegasus and unicorns. Very good. That'll be all, Celestia told the diplomat, who ba bowed and tried it out the throne room. Alcorn turned to her sister. And how is dear little pets faring? So you have bonded very strongly with a Pegasus parents these past few weeks, Luna replied. But she half stated her desire to remain an Earth Pony, and not have what Tate stolen from her restored. Even though she'll not admit it. In truth, she does miss her friends and family in Cottonville. Celestia said with a sigh. I hope we can get through all this legal tape soon, so she may visit her homeland. With a sigh. I want to try it over to the window. Notice the sun beginning to set. Then, I believe I shall go relieve to that crew of the unicorns from the duties we have set them on since we left, sister. I feel like creating the sky for myself. So we are flapping our wings, taking out to the sky. It will be of good to give some of our subjects pleasant dreams once more. I think I'll be uh, taking my cellar duties back a few days myself. Celestia replied with a sigh. Trying over, resting her head on a windowsill. I didn't spend a thousand years trapped on the moon. I can use a few more nights away from my duties. Well then, rest well, my sister. Enjoy my beautiful night and pleasant dreams. This is our subjects to you. My sister then called back. But not lose yourself in those dreams, sister. For such losses do not be the mistakes of our corns, but rather a pony's folly of youth. The end. <sighs> the story was my second encounter with a knee Twilight Then, Twilight Now universe. And I have to admit, it's a pretty interesting universe, and the story was fun. Well, I may not agree with Tornado Hose's, Fire Hose's headcan that goes from Equestria to Tails to G3 Den G1. I must prefer G1, G2, G1, My Little Pony Tails. I prefer to skip over three. Look, Alex Morlorn can create as many awesome stories of the G3 world as possible, but it still annoys me. And then G4. I do like his ideals coming through this. I like the world he has set up. Although the question that falls afterwards, after several thousands of years have passed. Because those things happen. You know, maybe there's the enemy you can't beat. Maybe there's something that pushes back that becomes too strong for you. There was a Superman story that explored a similar idea, and I kind of liked it. Didn't do it too well, though, but I but I don't write a comic book review show, so I'm not going to talk about that. But, while I do like it, there are some problems that prevent it from being the best. Before I talk about what I like about the story, we need to move on to the bad. First off, my pet peeve. As I said earlier in one of the chapters, 
Earth parties do have magic! I'm sorry, but this wasn't a pet peeve of me when I first read this story, but ever since season 4 of My Brave Pony, Starfleet's magic, this has become a pet peeve of me and has ticked me off. So much so that I have to read the two fanfics that got on my faves list where it talks about Earth Pony magic just to wash off the stupidity of it. Earth Ponies do have magic. They are stronger, more endurable, and have, and have the deeper connection with the Earth than Pegasi and Unicorns. They can grow crops. They can grow food. They can manipulate the Earth far better than any other culture. Oh yeah, I know somebody tried, I know there was this article on Ikuo D where he tried to say, Oh, but, oh, but Bulk Biceps, he is super strong. He is only strong because of his cutie mark. And, and Fluttershy can control animals, again, only because of their cutie mark. Earth ponies can do that without needing a cutie mark. Well, needing strength or animal caretaking to be their special talent. They do it naturally. That is where their strength lies. I don't know how many episodes, how many times in the show we actually had to see that to prove a point. But, yeah, that's where Earth's ponies and strength lies. How's that a hard concept, people? And it annoys me. Because I feel like slapping somebody whenever that happens. I, I know it's not Tornado Firehose's fault. Alright, it's a great idea. This was good, and I'll talk about that later. But this will always be something that just pisses me off. Every time I see it, because I like to, because I feel like I had to point out with a diagram what type of magic our ponies have. Which did make me think of why this got away with it done well, and my kids didn't. And I break it down to two ways. Number one, when Micah did it, it was less of a good story reason and more of a, oh, see how this bad guy had been tormented throughout all his life and had been betrayed by friends and family. Oh, this one girl broke up with him and broke his heart and thus he had to stay, and thus he had to become suicidal and teamed up with T-Rex. Oh, well, is him. His girlfriend left him for somebody with magic. Oh, well, is him. And say that he had been bullied as a kid for his lack of magic. What? This, I can at least say, is a little more based off of, you know, zealots and seeing ponies. And ponies who just don't understand magic. And those are far more believable. Second, this actually feels like there was a story being told here, and rather not trying to, very poorly mind you, establish some sort of theme that Mike had always tries to pull off, but fails worse than Zack Snyder doing Superman vs. Batman. Hello! <sighs> Number two on my complaints is grammar. Oh, the story is graphically sound and all that. It's word choice. See, every time I read those, read the author saying Phillies, I'm not thinking teens here. I'm thinking something about around Alpha Blue, School Blue, and Sweet Bell's age. And that kind of ruins the illusion for me. It takes me out of the scene because it makes me think that there's those little kids and where are the teenagers and where are the little kids doing having these full grown adult lives? What? But those are my complaints for me. Everything else I really enjoy. I love how he decided to focus on G2. 
Because let's face it, My Little Pony Tales is, well, not as hated as G3. But isn't as liked as G1. Oh, and believe me, there are a lot of more people who love G1 than there are My Little Pony Tales. Remember, My Little Pony had a nice little fandom, small though, before My <laughs> Friendship is Magic. There were probably also other men who liked My Little Pony before we Bronies became a thing. It's just that we didn't have a way to express that. Now that the internet is out there, all the men who fell in love with My Little Pony G1 because of the magic, the adventure, and some of the characters have now come out to play. I've always had a theory that if the internet existed back in the 1980s, yeah, My Little Pony would have been popular. The Brony movement would have started out way earlier than that. And My Little Pony Tales sadly would have seen as a poor follow-up to G1. And in some ways it is. As I said, guilty pleasure. Even I can admit that it's a guilty pleasure for me, as yes, I do enjoy it. I enjoyed the fact that, unlike G1, which is awesome and has really great characters, it actually manages to stick with a team of six now! And Asley does take the time to give us t a chance to explore all their characters, all their personalities, and their stories. I do like that. While there are some other things to complain about when it comes to My Little Pony Tales. But this isn't a default of the show or even the fandom. Sadly, we have to remember how a lot of us came into the show. We didn't all come in because we were fans of My Little Pony. We all came in because... A lot of some of us came in because we were fans of that guy with the glasses. And do you remember what a certain t reviewer used to do with My Little Pony? I.E. C.L.R.? Yeah. Do you remember... Remember what he showed of My Little Pony Tales? Yeah. The girls singing about boys. And Bon Bon being really girly. He didn't show the fun parts of, G of My Little Pony Tales. So that kind of saps into the consciousness of some of the more some of the other people. Thus making what was a fun little side story uh, kind of tainted, tainted. Much like how Nostalgia Chick's main view of G1 tainted my view of the original series for a while. See, it's all about perspective. Tornado Firehose does a good job in showing off their characters. And actually showing off that, no, they aren't just all boys. And, oh, I gotta do something with my hair. And overly girly. He actually shows that, there are, that they do have their own personalities, their hopes, their dreams, and characterizations and he does try to his best to actually show that there is strength and femininity that some of these girls do have overly girly traits but that's not a bad thing which again is something I applaud um, my my friendship is magic for always they show that all the girls have different traits different personalities and when it comes to rarity it shows that some of them are really feminine but that's not a weak thing. No, because Rarity is strong, even though she is, you know, Rarity. I forgot to add that in my complaints. The ending with Patch kind of hurt. It, it, it felt like it was an extreme disconnect with the rest of the story. I mean, throughout all it all, we've seen these characters start enjoying their friends or their presences became closer against what was supposed to happen, only for Paz to suddenly say, oh my god, you princesses, I have to, I have to di disagree with this. 
I think it would have been better if we saw that Pat didn't really care. It would have really strengthened the message of the overall theme of the story. The twist that Colin Phil was actually slicing up hearts and wings. Bravo. I had to say, I did not see that coming. It, it was well done. With all the menace and shock that it deserved. Showing just how far zealots would go in order to keep their own ideology to the point where they were kidnapping people. This was really, really good. And I love that type of twist. And it really added some more drama attention to the story itself. I also enjoyed Celestia and Luna's little funs around here, just messing with things. So, overall, a fun little story. Cute and very satisfying. How, but next time, since the superhero summer has started, and it started out great, if you ask me, I think it's about time we brought out some superhero stories of our own again. You called? Oh, no, 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 princess. No, 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 wait your turn. You have something else in mind? Yes, but let's not tell them of what your story is. Just quite yet. All right, I'll wait. See you all in a few weeks. If somebody tells you that I'm assessing your average everyday happy go lucky mare with a bunch of smiles and cheery look on my face, well, you ain't right. But what you don't know is that there's something more than me. <laughs> and what's that, you might ask? Oh, that's a secret. But maybe if you come tomorrow, I'll let you know. <laughs> It's gonna be fun! See you then, my little friends. <laughs> Next time, Legend of Mary Well.